My name is Hannah and this is my beauty budget. Okay y'all, the time is nigh for me to shop my stash again. And I say that the time is nigh, but I feel like I might actually be a little bit early this month. I'm either right on time or a little bit early, which is good because I usually let it go much longer than a month and I'm trying to be more on top of it with my Shop My Stash series. So I'm doing it. I'm shopping my stash. As always, I'm going to review the things for which I shopped my stash last time and then I'm going to let you know which are the items that I picked to use in the coming months. Let's go ahead and get straight into the meat of the video. I always try to pick an eyeshadow palette when I'm shopping my stash. I think I've picked an eyeshadow palette for pretty much every Shop My Stash video, and last month it was the Urban Decay Electric palette. I expressed some concern about shopping my stash for this palette, partly just because it is so bright and I don't go for these brights on an every day or even an every week basis. I also was wearing more editorial clothing even than usual last month because I had a month of Rent the Runway and so I was worried a little bit about layering editorial brights on top of editorial clothing, but it ended up working out. I had some fun days with some interesting clothing and some bright eye looks. And then I ended up using this palette to create a number of successful bright eye looks over the ensuing month. I feel like I didn't show very many of them on camera. When I did my Get Ready With Me with my friend Juline, I used this palette and I made a bright pink look. I definitely used it for some daily looks, like I just used it to wear to go to work. And I used it every time, I think every time, we had a Poema photo shoot in between the time I shot my stash for this and today. So I think that was either three or four photo shoots for which I made super bright looks using this palette. I didn't film very many looks that I had created with this palette, but I did take pictures. So I'll insert some pictures right now of different looks that I had with this palette. I tried to document a few of them just to prove to you guys that I did use it. I think I used all the shadows. Yeah, I think I used all the shadows. It was great. It, it solidified the role of this palette in my collection as just the perfect go-to for color. I really appreciate being able to reach for this when I want to create a bright, colorful look, but I also find myself reaching for it when I want to intensify the performance of a shadow that is a color but isn't necessarily a bright. So if I'm building kind of a dusky mauve eye look with some muted purple shadows. I might finish the look, it might look really good, and then I might just go in with one of these purples down here and just pop a little bit on the center of the lid to give the look some dimension, some saturation. That's probably the purpose for which I lean on this palette the most, but I did really enjoy forcing myself essentially to create full looks that centered on this palette during the past month. But now it's just going to go back into my collection and continue to be the accent palette that it always has been. It sits there, it keeps me from ever purchasing another rainbow palette because I have this one so I don't need more. I appreciate and love it, but I'm ready to stop trying to use it almost every day. I'm ready to move on to something else. I also picked this face palette last time, this NARS cheek palette. It's the unfiltered one, long discontinued, as is the Urban Decay Electric palette, but you guys know I don't shy away from talking about discontinued stuff on my channel because to me, talking about my experience with these items isn't about these items. It's about the use of bright editorial eyeshadows. It's about the use of dusky rosy blushes and brownish blushes. It's about the colors and the textures and the fashions and the styles. It's not about product, it's not about shopping. So I'm sorry if it gets your goat that these things aren't available anymore, but hopefully you can take the information and apply it to things that you already own. This is probably the piece of makeup for which I shopped my stash last time that I reached for the least. I don't know why. I think it, it's not because of this palette specifically, it's because I haven't been reaching for very much blush and I know, I know what the other culprit is. I just realized it when I was sitting here. It's this, 
the Jouer blush duo that Wendy sent. I have been reaching for this almost daily. So I guess you could say that as hard as I tried, this palette did not stand up to the allure of that blush duo. I'll show you the inside of it. I did mention it recently in my Reckoning. I talked about it in the Reckoning because I reckoned with it and I decided to keep it, so I showed it there. But it's these beautiful, very, very neutral, pale blushes. I've just been enjoying using these to finish a look, and I think I can confidently say that it's not the novelty, it's not the fact that they're relatively new to me, it's the perfection of this. It has shot to the top in terms of blushes for me, and I've just wanted to use it all the time. The novelty is probably a little bit of it, but I think that that's an enduring classic for me. So the combination of the fact that it's novel and new and the fact that it is so awesome and perfect kind of edged this one out almost every time. But I did manage to use all of these at least once. This one down here, as I said in a recent video, was kind of the pleasant surprise. I previously had thought that this was too brown of a product for me, but it turns out that it buffs out to a really beautiful rosy sheen, kind of a healthy bronzy sheen on me. It was in my favorites video actually that I talked about it because this product really was a favorite, that brown down there. I used that one quite a number of times. All the rest of these I think I used them all just one time. And this highlighter, it, it, it is a little bit too gold. I can use it as a blush topper. I, I can use it in a targeted way, in a really specific way, but as just a general highlighting product that I can kind of wash all over. It gives a very specific gold shift, very specific gold sheen, and that isn't usually what I'm looking for in a highlighter. So it's not that it's unworkable, it does have a place, but it's, it continues to not be one of my favorite highlighters. But the rest of these blushes, I just enjoyed them. I really, really like this palette. It's one of my nicest and most precious cheek palettes, and cheek palettes are one of my favorite categories of makeup. So in theory, this is one of my favorite, one of my best items of makeup because it's the top of one of my top categories. But because I've had it for a couple of years, it tends to kind of sit there. I tend to kind of forget that it's not ho-hum. So it was a good choice to resuscitate it, to bring it out into the light, and to remind myself how special it is. That's what Shopping My Stash is all about. And even though it did get usurped ever so slightly by the Jouer blush duo. I have been reminded of how special and exciting this palette is. I would say I have warmer and fresher feelings towards it than I did before I shopped my stash for it this month. All right, and then I shopped my stash for two lip products and one of them was a total fail. It was this Anastasia Beverly Hills liquid lipstick in the color American Doll. The color is amazing. The color is patently amazing. I wore it in a video was it my check-in? I think it was my check-in. It was the video in which I wore that Marnie blouse with the red flower, the graphic black, red, and white blouse, and it matched perfectly with the red in the blouse. It made for an amazing Instagram picture. It made for an amazing look for a video. It is a gorgeous color, but the formula failed me. And I didn't just wear it in that video. I also wore it to work, I think, that same day. It didn't take very long for it to wear off around the inner rim, and when I went to reapply it, it didn't layer over itself very well. It just isn't worth it, and I have so many reds, and I have so many reds in gorgeous formulas. I have more reds than I can handle, and I'm pretty much putting the kibosh on buying or accepting red lipsticks from here on out for the foreseeable future. As much as I love reds, it's just getting to the point where I have so many amazing ones that it's hard for me to even keep them all in my head. It's hard for me to choose between them. And I was keeping this one around because as many reds as I have, this is the only true red, true liquid lipstick. Like an old fashioned liquid lipstick formula that dries down matte and stays all day, at least that's its claim, claims to stay all day. And so it made it through my lipstick declutter because I was thinking and I said in that declutter, what if I need it? What if I need a red liquid lipstick? What if I need a flawless liquid lip to last all day and not budge, something that I don't need to think about and don't need to reapply, etc., etc.? So I kept it. And then I stopped my stash for it so that I could try it out to see if 
it would be that to me to see if it's actually good enough to fit that role. And what I learned is that it's not good. And if I had some kind of all day event for which I needed a red lipstick, I wouldn't pick this because I learned that just a couple hours into the day, it looks bad. So I've been thinking about this weird problem of being on YouTube and wanting to make sure that everything that I decluttered gets decluttered officially in the context of a declutter video. I am not into the idea of hanging on to stuff that I've decided I don't wanna keep so that it can be decluttered in the context of a declutter video. So I'm going to go ahead and declutter this now. I'm putting it into my bag of things to get rid of, and this is it. You guys aren't gonna see it again. You're not gonna see it in a lipstick declutter or in any other kind of declutter. I, I, just, I just don't wanna hang on to it anymore. In stark contrast, the last little thing for which I chopped my stash last time, also a lipstick, is amazing. And I loved it already, but I fell more in love with it because of having shopped my stash for it and because of using it and using it. I loved it so much. I love it so much that it was in my January favorites video. It was one of my favorite makeup products in January. It's Bite Beauty Chai. I wore this a lot. I am making significant progress on it. I think I'm making some progress and I think I'm going to kind of keep it out and keep using it and really try to get through it. I can't remember panning a lipstick in the time since my love of makeup really started flourishing. I used to pan lipsticks in my early and mid 20s when I was going out dancing tango all the time and I was wearing lipsticks all the time but I only had a few of them. So I've panned lipsticks before but it's been a while and I would love to pan this. I would love for this to be the one. It's a mini so it's not that big of a deal if I can manage to get through it but I feel like it's doable. Both the color and the size and the formula, everything about it makes it a good candidate. So it's not an official project pan or anything. I'm not gonna like hurt myself to do it, but I, I don't know, we'll see. All right, let's move on to the things for which I shopped my stash today. So when it comes to eyeshadows, I decided to do something that I've never done before. I shopped my stash for a little, have I never done this before? I might have done this before, I can't remember. If any of you remembers, will you let me know? Now I doubt myself, I, I thought that I hadn't done it before, but now I think maybe I have. In any case, I shopped my stash for some singles. I put some singles into this little guy, and that's what I'm picking as my, uh, my palette this month. Look at the palette that I made. I just think it's so pretty. I did have a reason for making this palette instead of shopping my stash for a pre-made palette. And the reason is this. We are about to go to a tango festival. Next week, Valentango is happening in Portland, Oregon, and Joe and I will go and we will vend our wares, the handmade tango clothing that I make and that we sell. That's our small business. We go to Valentango every year. We used to live in Portland, so we have a lot of friends there, and also it's a big tango event. It's one of our major sales events. So we're gonna be up there and we're going to be working at the festival every day. So I'm going to be putting on makeup to go to the festival to work during the day. And then I'm also going to be putting on makeup to go work and possibly dance at night. So I wanted to shop my stash for something that I would be happy to bring to Portland for that festival. And I know myself and I know how I behave in those situations. And what I like to have on hand are curated palettes of singles. To be honest, I will probably also bring the Natasha Denona Gold palette. So part of my thinking with shopping my stash for this selection of singles was to do with what would complement the gold palette. I was thinking about what I might want or need that's not really in that palette, and I built this with that in mind. So this is kind of like half of what I expect to be using assiduously in the coming month. I'm not going to go through and tell you what every single shadow is, but all of these square ones are from the Natasha Denona Star Palette. This big red one is a Makeup Forever shadow. These square ones are also from the Star Palette. And then everything else is, I think, ColourPop, except for that big one right there, which is a JD Glow Galaxy shadow. I like this because it's color but it's grungy color. It's like the color that I 
gravitate towards, like the way that I love to use color. And the other thing that I did intentionally or that I didn't do when I put this together is that I didn't include my kind of go-to silvery mauve shadows. I have a whole bunch of single shadows that are like mauve grayish metallics. I didn't put any of them in here. I'm depriving myself of that easy route when it comes to building looks this month. I also put these kind of purples and reds, which I don't always gravitate towards. I've been really wanting to do more like cranberry red looks. I mean, my look today is kind of indicative of the direction I've been wanting to go in. For some reason, I've gotten it a hankering. I've gotten kind of a, an urge to do some more looks like this, kind of like dusky, intense, layered, wet looking, but rich red based looks, but not that warm orangey red that's been so trendy, more of like a cool cranberry red. This Makeup Forever shadow is actually what I used on my eyes today to get the kind of background for this look, and then I used a ColourPop Super Shock to get the glimmery, glittery stuff that's going on on my lids. It did get a little bit out of control, I hope it looks okay. There's one thing that's a little awkward about this, which is that I am hoping if everything goes as planned, and it really needs to go as planned because I'm on a tight schedule, if everything goes as planned, I will film my depotting video this weekend before we leave for Valentango, and then I will also film a video in which I declutter all of my single shadows. So the Natasha Denona shadows won't be included in that declutter video because they have a palette in which they belong and I'm keeping that palette, but the rest of these, the ones that are truly singles, will be included in that video. So if I manage to film that video before we leave, I will be taking many of these shadows out of this palette putting them in that video. They'll all probably make it through the declutter because I feel like if I picked them to put in this palette, then they're unique and special enough, but still I want them to be in the video. So they'll be in the video along with all my other singles. They'll hopefully all make it through the declutter and then I will put them back in this palette and take them with me to Valentango. So I'm just telling you that kind of to clarify for myself what will happen if I do manage to get those videos underway this month, but also to clarify for you. I don't want you to be confused when you see that I've shopped my stash for this little palette and then you see elements of this palette floating around in my single shadow declutter video. I'll probably take a picture of it so that I remember exactly what it was that I had in here. I'm so excited to have shopped my stash for this. I'm excited to have created this. I feel the genuine excitement, that delicious, luscious feeling about this that I have had sometimes about new eyeshadow palettes or new releases. I have the desire to use this that I sometimes have when a new eyeshadow palette is released. And when a new palette is released, I usually these days decide not to buy it, almost always these days. And so I have those feelings and then I just let them go or I let it go. But with this, I have those feelings. It's new to me. This palette, this arrangement, the relationship of all these eyeshadows to each other, all of that is new to me. So I have that excitement of something new, but I don't have to deny that excitement. I don't have to let it go. I can get my hands on this palette every single day this month if I so choose. This little palette, by the way, this little magnetic palette, it's probably my favorite of all of my magnetic palettes because of how slender it is. It's sturdy but slender, and I bought it on Amazon. So I'll definitely be linking this magnetic palette down below. This month I chose to shop my stash for two cheek products. This is the first one, and I think that this is the first time that anything has shown up in my shop my stash that is something that I didn't own at the beginning of the no buy year. I always shop my stash for stuff I've had for a really long time. It's always a way of digging out old products that I really love that I don't want to declutter, but that have been languishing or that have been overshadowed by new things. And this time when I was looking around, I'm always looking, when I go to shop my stash, I'm kind of waiting for something to strike just the right chord. It has to strike that chord of being something that I really want to use. So I see it and I'm like, oh yeah, I'd love to start using that more. But it also has to be something that I sort of almost wasn't remembering that I had. Something that's really been hiding 
hiding behind other things, hiding in the back of my mind. So I'm both excited to use it and I'm also aware that I'm kind of bringing it out of the darkness into the light. This palette, it's a Becca cheek palette, it's three Becca blushes. It was sent to me as a gift during my no buy year. And so it felt new to me for a long time and I did get a lot of use out of it when it was new and I really love it. But for whatever reason, for I would say some months now, it has been hiding behind other stuff. It's kind of been languishing. I've overlooked it. And so when I saw it, it struck that chord. It was both something I was really excited to reach for and that I think I would really like to take with me to Valentango and something that I thought, oh yeah, I where have you been all my month and then the month before that and then the month before that? So it perfectly fits the bill for something that works for a Shop My Stash project. This is the Tarte Highlighter in Exposed, and I feel like it's gotten a bit of play on my channel already. I think I might have shopped my stash for it last year, either that or I took it on a trip and I talked about it a lot. It is a very, very bright champagne-y highlighter that even though it shows up sort of as a streak on me, for some reason is just the right undertone for my skin so that I can really pile it on and it doesn't look dark. It also has pretty big chunks of glitter in it and I really love it. it it's very wet look on me. I said recently in I think my favorites video that I've been leaning towards a soft glow lately for highlighter and that's still true. I'm not trying to reject my current propensity for a soft glow, but I got a little ornery when I was shopping my stash and I saw this and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna pick that. I'm gonna pick that, one of my most blinding highlighters, but a highlighter that I really, really love and that I'll be excited to reach for and just see what happens, see if it reignites my love of a blinding glow. I also know that I will want a very, very bright highlighter when we're in Portland because the lighting is often dim in tango situations and it'll be something that's good to have. So I feel like I've already made the decision about which highlighter I'm going to bring with me on our trip and it's this one. And then I shopped my stash for one lip product. This is one of my kind of favorite and most cherished lipsticks. It's the Bite Beauty Amuse Bouche Liquid Lipstick in the color Puree. I bought this very close to the release of this formula. When Bite first released the liquefied Amuse Bouche lipsticks, I looked at the release and I looked at the colors and I went and bought this because of the color. I do like Bite and I like the formula. It's a little bit shiny for me and a little bit goopy and I think that that's why this has been languishing because I see it and I think, mm, I'm not sure I wanna mess with that today. It's, it's kind of messy, but I feel like I might have built it up in my head as being messier and more difficult than it is and I need to start using it again and relearn what the reality of this product is for me, if that makes sense. And I also just love, love the color. And I think that by using it frequently this month, I might kind of fall back in love with the color and get over my issues with the formula. That's my hope. I find this to be a very unusual and unique to me color. It's sort of like a rusty, burnt, orangey red, but not too dark. Grungy, natural, but it just has that je ne sais quoi. It has that editorial hue, that that just special pop to it. it. It has that feeling of something really unusual. Like there are a bunch of reds in the world. There are a bunch of orange lipsticks. There are a bunch of rusty types of red lipstick. I have some others that could be considered rusty, but I feel like this one, if I saw it on someone or if I saw it in a magazine spread or on someone on YouTube, I would be like, ooh, what is that? It, it just looks very sophisticated. It looks like the color was formulated by a master, a master eye. I'm really psyching myself up about this color. I can't wait to wear it this month. I'm so glad I shopped my stash for it. And that is it. Those are the things for which I shopped my stash, all four of which I think I will be taking with me on my trip to Portland next week. If you are on a no buy or a low buy or a budget, and you've never shopped your stash, if you've always 
felt like shopping your stash is kind of like an artificial construct and you, you've never felt like it would work for you, maybe give it a try. Maybe just give it a try. I found it to be one of the most incredible experiences of my no buy year, one of the most therapeutic and helpful and in some ways revealing methods that I had for dealing with my no buy and all of the emotions that I was experiencing during my no buy. And it's helping during my budget too. I feel like why would I buy an eyeshadow palette when I'm so excited about this one? I, I actually feel like there's not a single eyeshadow palette on the market that I would prefer to use over this one, especially when I would have to buy that one and this one I was able to just make. And why would I buy a lipstick when I was able to get myself so excited over returning to this one and remembering how great it is and reigniting my relationship with it? I, I just really believe in this process of looking at what you have and then looking again at what you have, waiting a little while, and then looking again at what you have and using that as a way of roughing yourself up and giving yourself some excitement in your life, some texture, some variety. You don't need to spend money to do that and you don't need to bring more stuff into your life to do that. All right, that really is it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope that you are remembering to take extra good care of yourself so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world. Are you uncomfortable? Do you want to go into the puma? Or you like the otter? <laughs> go into the puma, ready? There you go. Puma the tree. I need some perfect.